Welcome. We're so glad you're here. We are a lively church family who love Jesus and are excited by what he is doing. We believe that our relationship with him changes our lives and impacts the lives of those around us. We know that we can't do life alone. So we look to support and care for each other through life's ups and downs. We care about our streets, our neighbours and our towns. And we want to make Jesus known in Salte, Sutton, Bailden, Eastburn, Bingley, Menston, the Air Valley, Bradford University. Welcome to City Valley Church. Loving Jesus. Growing together. Reaching Yorkshire and the nations. Hello and welcome to City Valley Church. It's great to have you with us, especially if you're joining us for the first time. My name's Naomi and I'm one of the leaders at our Airedale site. We believe that God is good and we are passionate about sharing his love in the communities we live in. We pray that you will know Jesus' love and experience his presence this morning. So welcome, let's enjoy celebrating Jesus together. Good morning, everybody. We're going to start this morning um, just by telling a short bit of the Christmas story. So let's begin. Well, shepherds watch their flocks by night, all seated on the ground. The angel of the Lord came down and glory shone Joyful, all ye nations rise. 
going to sing our Father now, our Father in heaven. We can pray into this season, we can pray into the next year, but we know that we want to see this goodness of God's kingdom, but we 
having this, this mind of Jesus, following him and putting each other and loving each other and the people around us ahead of ourselves. This is a massive part of the answer to that prayer. So let's pray for God's kingdom to come. And let's say, yes, Lord, we are going to, we're going to be the people of your kingdom. We are going to be like you. We're going to bring your love and peace to each other and the people around us.
Well, a Christmas offering this year is going towards providing emergency accommodation for the homeless in Bradford, which is actually particularly important this year because in churches, uh, the, the, the charity that normally provides uh, emergency shelter uh, within uh, church buildings uh, isn't able to run this year because of the pandemic restrictions. Now we're giving this gift to Hope Housing, which is a Christian run charity uh, whose mandate is to eradicate homelessness everywhere. Now, one way that Hope Housing is responding to the need for emergency accommodation is to buy uh, these pods and actually uh, they're called Amazing Grace Space Emergency Sleeping Pods. They're a bit like a cabin and what they've got inside is really a place to sleep, a toilet and a phone charging socket. And actually, most importantly, they have a key padded, uh, securely locked door. Um, now, these pods cost £5,000 each and Hope Housing has recently got permission to locate one of these on the grounds of St Stephen's Church building in West Bowling. Uh, now, I recently spoke to Angus, who works at uh, Hope Housing, uh, one of the colleagues of Leith, actually, who's uh, part of us uh, over at uh, Ed, the Airedale site. And anyway, Angus was saying that any money towards uh, this £5,000 cost for this pod will be such an important help in this first step towards providing uh, more permanent accommodation. So it'd be fantastic. I mean, maybe as a church, we could raise the whole £5,000 uh, in its entirety. Well, the easiest way uh, to give to this Christmas offering is online, uh, direct to our City Valley Church uh, bank account. The details are there for you. Um, but don't forget to put a reference on it uh, for Hope Housing. So reference Hope Housing. Well, it's me again. Now, in the first week of January, we want to invite you to not just one father's house, but three. Now, these are times when it's an uh, opportunity to really take that space, to worship, uh, to listen to the father's voice, listen to the song of the father, hear his love uh, being sung over us, uh, and to you know, set our gaze on him. And what better thing to do you know, at the start of 2021? Um, so in terms of the practicalities, you can come to one of them, two of them, or all three of them. The first one is on Zoom, and that's on Sunday evening, the 3rd of January from 8 till 9 p.m. Uh, the second two are in-person meetings, and they're going to be both at the Northcliffe Church and both from 8 until 9.15 on Wednesday evening, the 6th of January and Friday evening, the 8th of January. Um, now, uh, as with all in-person meetings, you will need to book up your place in advance and details of how to do that are in your family news or on the website. Well, Merry Christmas, everyone, today. I hope you're well. I hope you're enjoying um, multiple mince pies or Christmas movies, whatever, whatever it is you kind of prefer. But sincerely, I do hope that um, however you are today, you just feel the peace of God and his delight over you um, at this Christmas time. In in this season, normally, um I don't know if you're like me, but I, I do a bit of looking back on the previous 12 months and 
I think it's quite common for a lot of people to look forward and maybe even start to think about resolutions, things like that. In saying that, though, I'm aware that for some of us, we may be sick to death of uh, reflecting on the last year because you may feel that all all you've been able to do is is reflect with all the extra space you've got. But however that lands, it, it I couldn't help but smile to think kind of back to January and the resolutions I'd made then, um, particularly sure that I couldn't really remember any of them. I'm sure one of them was probably about exercise, but it got me thinking that um, I wonder if I'm if I'm alone in that, if there were other people who'd made kind of other other resolutions back then and jumped on Google and I found a few stats and I'm just going to read these to you to, to start. And I think they're great. Uh, this is an average of people in the UK and, it, and um, it's said with the top three most common kind of resolution themes. 48% of people wanted to eat more healthily. 34% of people wanted to reduce stress and 25% of people wanted to travel more. So that was 12 months ago. They were the top three resolutions. And I kind of feel like you could add on to each one of those, you know, well, I wanted to eat more healthily, but then lockdown happened. So I started to eat mince pies in June instead, or I wanted to reduce stress, but it's kind of impossible at the moment if you turn the news on or if you buy a paper. Uh, or my favorite of all of them, I wanted to travel more, but instead I'm finding that I'm just getting to know my living room really, really well. Um, and the point with all of that is it is it made me think, wow, we really do not have control, do we, of what will happen? And yet we're so quick to give away our future. It just seems so easy to do, doesn't it? Kind of our every lay, everyday language reflects that, you know, you probably find yourself saying, I'm going to do this next week, tomorrow, in a month, um, just happily giving away our future time. And you may even find that in your spiritual life as well. I'm going to pray more one day or have a better prayer life or something like that one day. Um, yeah. And as author and pastor, John Mark Comer puts it, the future is easy to give away for the simple fact that we don't yet have it. What he means is we're giving away something that doesn't really cost us anything to give it away. But he goes on to say, all we actually have is the present, the here and now, this moment, this gratitude, this surrender. Please hear me in this, though. You know, it is right and good in many respects to think about the future, to, to look forward to the happy things that are to come. And absolutely, we do that. I cannot wait till we are back together again as a church and just to be able to sing together. That'd be amazing. But I also think it's important to realise that if we only think like that all the time, if our eyes are always, always fixed on the next few months, we miss out on so much of what we have access to right now as sons and daughters of the King. So that's kind of what I want us to think about today, wherever we are, what we can have access to right now as his children. I really feel like Jesus kind of, I was preparing for this, he's really stood next to us and he's inviting us to, into a choice to, to kind of throw away the, the, the New Year's resolutions list and throw away the, I'm going to do it all in my own way and take hold of what, what he actually gives us now. It says in, in, in Proverbs, and this is very, taken from the New American Standard Bible, many plans are in a man's heart but the counsel of the Lord will stand. Many plans are in a man's heart, but the counsel of the Lord will stand. I think he counsels us now to grasp hold of what is real. Other ways to translate that word counsel are kind of like to purpose or, or will. You know, um, we may be counting on future plans um, when things get back to normal. But what scripture shows us and our own experience is that we can't, we can't count our own plans. But scripture says we can count on the Lord. We can count on his counsel. And I'm going to talk about three things today that are just part of his counsel, part of what God offers us each and every day. So those three things. Number one, he's waiting and wanting to listen to us. And to speak to us. And we, we call that prayer. Number two, 
He gives us new gifts every day, which we can be thankful for. And number three, he gives us hope. So what I'm going to do um, over the next kind of 10, 15 minutes is just do a, a short summary of those things that are tangible and for us today. And they are deliberate, um, the kind of reflecting and echoing themes that we've already looked at as a church over the last few months. And, and that's intentional. That's because there's been so many deep, wonderful truths that have come out of some of the teaching we've already had. And I thought it was beautiful to try and use some of the time today to reflect on some of that amazing stuff that has happened in 2020. Um, yeah. So number one, prayer. Or a different way to put that is that God wants to speak to us and wants to listen to us. Um, but I do wonder when I say that word prayer, what what do you think as you're sat there? Do you, do you feel joy, ambivalence? Maybe sometimes for some of us a sense we're not doing it right. As Pete Gregg explained in the recent prayer course that you know we've been working through in our connect groups this autumn, prayer isn't a place to be good, and it's not about getting it right. It's just a place to be honest. After all, God already knows every single thing about you. He made you and he knows how you think and feel. So it's pointless to try and pretend with him. But in prayer, and Pete Gregg writes this, there is a place for protest, for questions, even anger. There is a place just to sit with him and marvel at what he can and has done. He wants to express the full bandwidth of our emotions, good, bad, ugly to him. No filter, rather he pulls out, pours out his spirit into our hearts to give us the experience of being and communicating with him fully. And we see this in Jesus's relationship uh, with God in the Bible. He refers to God as Abba. Um, and this is significant because some scholars argue that a closer translation of Abba is, is either father or even possibly daddy. And there's a bit of debate about that whether it's daddy or whether it's father. But the point is either way, it's a term of an intimate kind of endearment. It's it's something that is really personal. That's what Jesus refers to God as, his father, his Abba. And that's the same thing we have today. We don't need to think about one day I'll have a great prayer life. We just need to remember that our, our father is like here now and we can, we can speak to him now. He wants to hear us right now. He wants to hear how you're doing right now. And it doesn't have to be perfect or any really, it's not about being right at all. It just has to be honest and intimate and informal and just be yourself. He, he kind of invites us to meet him in our suffering. And he invites us into his joy. So yeah, however you're doing today, Remember that your father's here now. He's here now. Another good thing I thought, you know, if I was going to chuck out a resolution, the kind of what I'm trying to do is chuck out a resolution and take something tangible that's now. Another one is thankfulness. Because again, resolutions are all like future thinking and I'm, this is going to happen, but actually we can be thankful for things right now in the day to day. And that's so much more wonderful because they're here, aren't they? Um, yeah, so throw out that mentality of living in the future that I need this or all that or whatever it is. Um, you know, the truth is we can't we can't control the future. We don't actually know what's going to happen. It might all take a lot longer to, for everything to get back to normal. Um, but but you know, even in seasons of like overall hardship, there are thousands of moments of beauty. I don't know what your simple pleasures are. You know. For me, sometimes it's just that first, genuinely is that first cup or even sip of coffee in the morning. The two coffee in the morning kind of guy and, and I just love those moments, this little kind of moment where of, 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 of the, the part of my world that I can control before my little kids trash everything up in the kitchen or something like that. You know, it's just kind of beautiful. And maybe you're not a coffee person. Maybe it's just the beauty of a sunny day or just, going for a walk or, or chatting to someone uh, you know every experience of pleasure and 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 goodness we can we can 
remembering gratitude and praise. And Paul um, kind of gets at this in scripture. He says in Philippians, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. You know, pause before turning on the news or maybe don't turn it on at all. Stop yourself from diving into the next thing the world has to say and instead think about whatever is good. It says in Genesis, you know, God saw what he'd made and he, and he said it was good and he's still the creator and he's still creating. You know, God doesn't change. He's still making good things for us. Um, and the other thing that's beautiful about this thankfulness is that this isn't just designed for, for, for me or just for you. It's designed for us. Obviously, we read about kind of Adam and Eve, you know, in, in the garden. We read about the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. They exist in community. These things we enjoy are designed for us together in community. And our, and our greatest expression of God's community is the church. That's the greatest way we experience it. Um, Viv spoke beautifully in November about the importance of community. And he reminded us that we are part of a body. Um, it's taken many years, and I really mean it's taken many years and kind of much wasted time when I look back to realise that it's it's much better just to let people into how I'm doing whether it's triumph or, or challenge, um, just to let people into how I am, into my pain, and encourage us all today to remember that actually in, in times of hardship or however you're doing today, that you can lean in to your community, can lean into your church. Again, another wonderful illustration um, from Paul in the Bible. He says, you are the body of Christ and individually members of of it. If one member suffers, all suffer together. If one member is honoured, all rejoice together. Thought a great way to illustrate this, um, if you bear with me for a moment, is in in lockdown or just after lockdown or to be honest, I don't remember, but at some at some point in the last few months they relaxed some of the restrictions and as soon as they did uh, we went to see our um see my parents and not seen in ages and they hadn't seen my my kids either and we were fortunate enough that my sister uh, as well could could visit as well at, at that same time um, but anyway we we woke up the next morning after we'd stayed overnight at theirs and um yeah we just woke up to the, i think the sound of my three-year-old running around the house saying um that my younger sister, who isn't actually uh, like, she's not, she's not little anymore, she's in, her, she's in her 20s, but she'd accidentally come locked in the bathroom. And you'll be able to tell from this story that, you know, we've all not been out that much because this this story is like a highlight of my year. But basically my, my three-year-old daughter discovered um, that my sister was shut in the bathroom and she'd been running around, my little three-year-old, telling everyone. And naturally, us wanting some drama, um, one by one, we all sort of ran to the, to the bathroom to see if we could somehow help my sister. Of course, what you know, we couldn't couldn't do anything. The lock had broken. Just and this, the whole thing just became a bit more farcical as more and more people like arrived outside the bathroom to try and help. It probably only made things worse as we as we crowded around and um, it all got a bit more ridiculous when we realised the only way we were going to get my sister out was through cutting <laughs> cutting down the door with a power tool. So that's what we had to do. Whilst and again, my youngest daughter, who's three. Uh, made up a song which I think is pretty cool actually for a three-year-old but she, it went something like um, when Jenny got stuck in the bathroom she began to shout you boys and girls won't get any toys if you don't let me out and so my sister's singing that we're all crowding around the bathroom but uh, not my sister my daughter's singing that Jenny my sister is trying to get out and it's just the whole thing was just crazy and actually a, a bit of a delight um, and that's entertainment in 2020 isn't it but the, the point of that story is that actually that was quite funny and and in no way was it scary or anything like that you know and and the reason for that is because it was it you know jenny there's no one else in the bathroom with jenny at that point but she had people around her she knew who would be able to help her she had people around her who she could share that experience with and so wherever you are today I just encourage you to remember that you are in his church. You know, City Valley is his 
church and you have people around you that can that that can help and speak in into any situation that you're in and and that's that's the point that community isn't just something that's nice it actually changes the nature of the situation it changed the nature of the situation for my sister it wasn't anything scary or anything like that it was funny and, and, and a delightful experience in some ways to share and i think there's something really powerful in that that yeah we have thankfulness but we have that thankfulness for those moments together and finally and what i will close with is my kind of last um thing that i want us to reflect on um it's not just that we can talk to our father in prayer it's not just that we um can be thankful and we can do that together we actually also have real tangible hope so again, if you if you if you tempted to start thinking resolutions again, chuck that away. Don't think about that. Think about what we have now. We have real tangible hope, and hope's powerful. Viktor Frankl, uh, who was a famous uh, neurologist and psychiatrist, and also a Holocaust survivor, um, wrote the following about life inside the concentration camps. He said, "The second a prisoner gave up hope." died in days they had a marker they would often each prisoner would often have one cigarette their, their last cigarette and if they decided they were going to smoke that that it was a recognition that that was it and then soon after they would actually pass away it's like they would just say no more that's it victor frankl says when i saw a man pull out that last smoke i knew they were as good as they and the point he was making is that without hope, we die. Which is why we can rejoice that our hope isn't some kind of flimsy optimism. Things might get better. It's a grounded expectation of coming good based on the character of God, based on the reality that 2,000 years ago, Jesus came to earth to die for our sins, to reconcile us back to God. And that has changed everything. Again, I'm not the only one to speak about hope. Mark did a wonderful job and Remembrance Sunday of, of speaking about that. And just want to draw out that our hope is, is threefold. Number one, that the bad things we might experience will somehow work out for good. That Jesus can take the rubble of our life and reassemble it into something beautiful. Number two, that the good things that we have can't be taken away. That's the really good things. That's our relationship with Jesus, the Holy Spirit, salvation. Those things are permanent. And three, the best things are yet to come. Resurrection, the coming world, a new world where there'll be no more tears and no more pain. Forever, eternity with God. A, a, a real tangible hope. It's fair to say that this may have been for some of us, 2020, one of the most challenging times we might have known. It may have meant disruption, loss, separation and grief. And to be honest, there haven't been easy answers, have there? Few quick fixes. But it's in this space that I feel like God really wants to remind us that we still have hope in him. He is in control. He says that he will build his church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And we've seen that. I've been amazed this year at like this right now is church. Yeah, it's might, it might not be how we would always do it, but it's still church. We're still meeting together. The gates of hell will not prevail. There is still hope and it's still tangible. It's amazing. That's our reality today. Yeah, and I just felt I wanted to encourage us um, in that, um, in that wonderful, wonderful truth. Paul, the apostle, wrote from prison, God is able to do so much more than all we ask or imagine. 
according to, according to his power that is at work within us. And he wrote that bound and confined, kneeling on a cold stone floor with chains around his ankles. And we may feel bound. We may feel confined in a kind of a, kind of a house arrest that we're in. But God is still at work. He's still able to do so much more than our circumstances or even our imaginations would ever have us believe. So my encouragement to us today is that it's been a tough year. And it's okay to say that. Go and talk to God about that. Be honest. It's fine. Talk to Lean into the church about it. It's okay. It's probably looked very different to what you were expecting. And it's okay to say that too. But we're invited to throw away, put down the New Year's resolutions list and instead take hold of what he offers us. He's waiting to listen. We can enjoy his gifts and be thankful, whether it's a cup of coffee or a cup of tea. And we have a solid, real hope in who he is. In Jesus, son of God that came 2000 years ago, what we remember at Christmas. And in his hope, the death and resurrection, new life, promise of amazing things to come. I really hope and pray you have an amazing rest of your day and just, yeah, can rest in those three simple things today. And God God bless you guys. It's just been amazing to be with you. Um, yeah, go and enjoy another mince pie. Give thanks to God for it. See ya. Thank you for joining us this morning. We hope that you've experienced God's goodness and love during our time together. If you're watching this live, in a few moments we'll be catching up on Zoom and we would love to see you there. As we draw this time to a close, I just want to highlight a few things. If you're new tuning in, we'd love to hear from you and have the opportunity to get to know you better. If you want to find out more about our midweek connect groups, children's and youth groups, or even if there's something you'd like to receive prayer for, then check out our website where you can also get in touch with us. We also regularly run Alpha, which is ideal if you're exploring the Christian faith for the first time or just want a boost to your faith. Details of the next Alpha course can be found on our website where you can also access lots of great resources for helping you grow in your Christian faith. For all the latest information on church life, check out our weekly email, which has all the key dates, information and events that are coming up. Thank you again for joining with us. We hope to see you again soon and pray that you have a great week.